at each step and at each vertex x, keep track of a distance, dx, and a directed path, px, from the root to vertex x of length dx. We'll always have distances. We'll always have paths. Here's how you initialize the, this information. You scan from the root, and you look at all edges that go directly from the root to another vertex. So for each vertex, you have a path which consists of going from R to X, but the question is whether that's a real edge or not. If it's not a real edge, and you can't travel on it, you say you could travel on it, but you have to pay infinite number of dollars to do so, which mathematically means you won't travel on it. But if there's a real edge, then the distance of that path is the weight on that single edge. So there might be an edge to go from here to there. One edge. But that edge is a meandering country drive. It's taking me around, and I see nice scenery, and it's really pleasant, but it's actually quite long. I don't go through any other cities, but it's a meandering path, which one stop but in the ultimate sense, it turns out to be very wasteful. That can easily happen. But that's your initialization step. All your initial paths are start with the root and go to your final destination in a single hop. So the distance from Atlanta to San Francisco would be infinite. The distance from Atlanta to Sandy Springs would be one. I mean, it would be the, whatever the, the mileage is of, say, going up Georgia 400. Okay. Vertices are declared to be either permanent or temporary. And the only one that starts out as being permanent is the root. And the, the optimal path from the root to the root is don't go anywhere, don't pay anything. So distance from the root to itself is zero. All right, now, what do we do? The inductive step is as follows. Of all the temporary vertices, choose one, say x, whose distance to the root is minimum. Mark that vertex permanent, and that path will never change. And then, for each temporary vertex y, distinct from x, you have two ways to get to y. You already have, so I want you to envision, here is y, it's this chair. And here is x, it's this chair. Now, when I mark the path from here to here permanent, it's provably optimal. So I have a really, really good way to get from the root to here. Now, I have a candidate path about how to get to here. Maybe it pretty bad. Maybe not. I don't know. It's just a candidate path, and I get over here. All right, do I have another candidate path? Yes, I have a good path to go from here to here. Now, look at this edge from here to here. Here's a good path, and if this edge is not too expensive, I have a better way to go here. I go to here, and then go over to here. So that's what I do. Look at this line. I have a distance to y, which is a candidate distance, and I don't know whether it's any good or not. I have an optimal distance to x, and I have the weight of the edge x, y. So all that line is doing is comparing the distance of two paths, one which I already had, and a new candidate one which is going to x, and then going from x to y. Take the better of the two. And in computer science terms, 
make the change only when it results in a real improvement. Otherwise, just if it's a tie, just live with the one you've got. If this assessment assignment lowers the va value of d of y, change the path. Change the path, throw away this old path, and replace the candidate path from y as the candidate path to x, and then one move on to y. And continue. All right, now let's, let's work through this. And I've got data, the data is from that picture. But I just want you to, to kind of glance at this. You have to study the sequence of slides very carefully in order to make sure you understand what's going on. The color red is signifying permanence. So the only path and distance that's permanent at initialization is the one, zero, one. Distance to two is infinite. That means there's no edge from one to two. Now let me just back up. Look at the picture. There's no edge from one to two. Agreed? And that's why when I initialize it, the path is to go directly from one to two, but the, the price you pay is infinite. Now, all the other ones are the weights, the true weights. There's a weight of 47, a weight of 70, and a weight of 24. And again, I back up. And you see the three edges incident with the root? And their weights are 24, 47, and 70. So when I initialize the algorithm, the only weights which are finite are those ones which represent edges incident with the root. So what does the algorithm do? It looks at the temporary distances, and it chooses the minimum one and marks it as permanent. What's that minimum one? It's the distance to 6, which is 24. So the next step is that line is going to become permanent. And I look for scans from 6, and I've got a scan on vertex 4. The original distance to 4 was infinite, but I look at infinity versus the, the cost of going to 6 and paying 24, and then going from 6 to 4. We'll back up. Look, where is 6 in this picture? 6 is up here at the top, right? See it up in the top left? And there should be an edge directly from 6 to 4, which is 120. So if you go to 6 and pay 24 and go from 6 to 4 and pay 120, you've paid 144. And so I update that. And in the next slide, you will see the distance to 4 being 144. OK, now, out of the remaining ones now, see, see the 144 at line 4? But you look at all the temporary distances and take the cheapest one. The cheapest one is now 47. You declare it permanent. And you scan from that vertex to see other candidate paths. And based on those scans, you update three of them. Now, I'm not going to just toggle back and forth between these pictures. These will be posted. You really need to work your way through these slides to make sure that you understand this updating process. Okay. When we get back together on Thursday, I'll explain to you why this algorithm works.